Welcome to the final part of this four-part story, The White City, written by Patrick Neat and read by me, Brian Blessed. Part 4. The FTZ Gabriel took his usual route to work through the bus station where the marketeers were setting up their stores. This wasn't as exciting as it used to be, not since the cops had cracked down on thieving from the FTZ, but you could still find pretty much anything you wanted if you were prepared to look the look and talk the talk. All sorts of food, every label of clothing, spare parts for any machine you could name, and quasi-traditional knick-knacks brought in by the country folk for tourists. Of course, Gabriel had no money for shopping, but he liked the atmosphere created by the hotchpotch of races among the traders. Most of them had come to work in the FTZ at one time or another. Some had been sacked, some had arrived to find no trace of the job promised by their second cousin, some hadn't even found trace of their second cousin. He knew the majority of the marketeers by sight, and a lot of them by name, and he shouted out to them as he walked past, "'Fine morning, Julio!' Yo, Seco! How's tricks? Aha, Maria! You look gorgeous as ever. Yeah, things like that. He was passing a trailer doing brisk business in microchips, motherboards, RAM, and the like, when a voice called out. Hey, Gabriel, how's your girlfriend? He stopped in his tracks and turned around. It was the black kid, expertly counting notes, and he was grinning wide and friendly. Gabriel had seen him around all right, but they'd certainly never spoken. You talking to me? Sure. You are, Gabriel, right? Right. So I was asking, how's your girlfriend? Gabriel was puzzled and shook his head. <laughs> I don't have a girlfriend, he said. No? The black kid smiled, didn't even flicker for a second. My mistake. Gabriel arrived at the FTZ by five to seven and showed his pass at the gate. The guard examined it with exaggerated and suspicious diligence, his fingers drumming on the holster on his hip before letting Gabriel through. Most of the crew were already at it, stacking the day's load, their faces streaked with sweat. But Michael the foreman was sitting on an upturned barrel, peering into a small mirror and twisting the ends of his elaborate moustache. Without even looking up, he said, you're late. No, I'm not. The others have already started. They're early, Michael. So you better be early, too. I can find hundreds of men who will always be earlier than you. Now Michael raised his eyes to him. They were milky beneath amused brows that wrinkled his tough, nutty skin. It's early in the day for you to be so grumpy, Gabriel said. That's for sure. Michael jerked his head towards the other side of the yard. There, by one of the female dormitories, a group of twenty or so Indian women were sheltering in the shade. Their opulently coloured saris looked out of place beneath such pinched and worried faces. More of them, Michael muttered. There's always more of them. These days I don't know what country we're in. Gabriel laughed and joined in this familiar exchange. This is no country, my friend. This is a free trade zone, remember? So where are we today? Today? Gabriel paused as if to think about it. He picked up a monitor and heaved it onto the back of the truck. Today we're in America. Why is that? They're American computers, so we must be in America. The land of the free. It's logical. Michael finally lowered the mirror and looked around like he was seeing the compound for the very first time. At that moment, a gust of wind blew dust into his face and left him spluttering. What the fuck's happening to this country, he coughed. The land of the free is going to the dogs. 